Hello, welcome to the second video in the series about uh, bicycle assembly video series and uh, in this video I will install the fork and uh, mount the stem and set the bearing preload headset bearing preload so it all works properly and I will let, let's start now okay first thing I'm doing is adding some grease to the fork crown race so that it just to be on the safe side I had already greased the bearing balls of the of the headset bearings but a little bit of extra grease will be pushed out and my thinking is that it will prevent uh, water and uh, dirt from entering the bearings so having a bit of extra doesn't hurt it can be just wiped off after after a first try or first test ride here the frame is set upside down for easier installation there I had inserted the the fork and now I will install the the sorry stem and some spacers to hold it all in place before I turn the frame around so that I can set the fork preload and everything else there I'm installing installing the top side bearing race and adding a spacer and then I will install the the stem to the, the, these uh, uh, bearings usually have some sort of uh, dust protectors and uh, they, they should be placed uh, like they, they came from the factory if the headset is new there's usually a link with uh, instructions how to assemble it and I will also add a link on uh, in the video explanation section from my website where that is showed in, shown in an expanded view like some sort of a graph so you can see how to place it all here I'm just uh, placing it like hand finger tight and we'll just uh, tighten the pinch bolts enough to hold it all in place so I can turn the whole bicycle around and set the preload properly and everything else it also needs the top cap in order to achieve a, a proper optimal preload uh, I will use this um, part to note that uh, setting the pre bearing preload is very important for both functioning and the uh, lifetime duration of the bearings if you set it too too much preload the bearings will not work very very nice and they will wear wear, wear out prematurely uh, the same thing goes for making it loose if you make uh, not enough preload there will be a sens a sensible you, you can sense the play when you especially when you press the brakes and when you use the, the steering also uh, bearings will not last as long both with too much and too little preload that's why it's important to set an optimal preload and how to do it will be now explained in this video here I put some anti-seize paste on the the, the screw that uh, holds the top cap before I screw it in and now I'm just making the alterations of this setup so that everything can be shown on camera properly there I'm, I first turned the screw anti-clockwise to make sure it slides in properly so that it doesn't get cross threaded and damage the, the threads and now I will need to set the, the optimal preload the best way to do, is, do this is finally when the whole bicycle is, is assembled uh, with its own standing on its own wheels to place the bicycle on the ground hold the front brake squeezed and rock the frame forward and backwards and then feeling your with your finger if there is any movement of, on the of the of the fork and the the proper pre there I'm just rearranging the all the spacers now to suit the the way it this this should be fitted because I don't want too little uh, it, it, sorry there's this important part where the you can see the stem is a bit higher than the the fork uh, neck or not sure of the proper English term but the, the steering column of the, of the fork it needs to be a bit higher in order to allow the the preload bolt and the top cap to set the preload if they are in line flush or if the uh, fork uh, steering column is uh, higher protruding from the from the 
the stem, it will be not uh, possible to set the preload using the top cap. It, practically, it will be impossible to set it because you cannot do it precisely enough using just the, your, your hands. There, I replaced the spacer in order to get the proper distance. This distance will decrease as I screw the top cap in. Now I'm starting with some 6 to 7 millimeters and when all the preload is set properly it will be some 3 millimeters higher than the then the the stem will be of three, about 3 millimeters higher than the uh, steering column so pinch bolts will be able to uh, hold the stem against the steering column they will not miss it to use that expression and it, it will be possible to set the preload using the top cap there I will now demonstrate I'm trying to rock the fork fore and aft of course it's easier done when the bicycle is on its wheels this is just some initial phase I usually put some uh, tape on the parts that are not yet finished. So in this case, I would put some tape on the uh, preload bolt in order to remind me to set the proper preload after the whole bicycle is assembled before giving it, giving it back to the customer or riding it. There, there is some slight play which is probably visible in this video. The pinch bolts are loose, and I should now use the top cap to further increase the, the preload a bit but trying not to overdo it and like I said the final tuning will be done when the bicycle is on, standing on its wheels and tires mounted there I, I add, added a bit more of preload and then by tightening the top cap bolt and now I'm checking for play again I, I do this in small gradual increments so that I don't overdo it and the point when the last quarter of a turn uh, makes all the play go away, it rhymes. Then, then it's the the optimal setup. You can you can take that as the as good as good to go. Here I'm using some force to see if there's any play, but it's much easier doing it using brake and pushing the whole bicycle fore and aft. It's often the case that using your hands. You cannot uh, feel any play, but when you use the the whole bicycle and rock it fore and aft, you, you still get some play. So a bit of trial and error, small increments, and you get to the to the optimal preload setting. For start for now, this is about good, and I'm now tightening the pinch bolts again, not using it to the manufacturer specified and recommended torque. It's just some first first step. It will be it, it should be finally done using a torque wrench. Here I'll use an opportunity to show the the main downside of the old uh, quill stem standard, not not the the one in this video that is threadless or a head called. And this quill stem uh, standard has one big downside and one big safety concern in my opinion and experience. That is that the whole, uh, sorry, the bars and the whole uh, quill and uh, the stem are held in place just by that small quill at the bottom. That is the only place that fixes it to the steering crown. And in case that the quill gets damaged or that the bolt holding the quill gets broken for any reason, like uh, fatigue, material fatigue, or whatever, you are left with bars that are free moving, not affecting the the fork so you, you lose all the steering while the modern design especially if you get a, a stem like in this video that is held by two pinch bolts eliminates that risk because the probability of both bolts getting uh, broken at the same time is very 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 small so it is an exponential increase in safety and that is what why I prefer these kinds of stems. Also, it is much easier to set the preload, as I have shown in this video. You have just one nut to tighten, while the old system uses the lock nuts on the bearing cups, and the preload is set uh, without even needing to have a, a stem. But it's much more time-consuming and takes a bit more effort and patience to set the optimal preload. Here I'm explaining in Serbian 
the what I had already explained, perhaps a bit faster in English, that the downsides of using this quill stem. They are showing that here, here this stem has two pinch bolts. There are models that have only one pinch bolt, and I would not recommend using such stems, even if they are a few grams lighter or something. I think it's not worth the risk because having steering control is crucial for bicycles safety. Uh, I would say even more than wearing a helmet or anything else, you need to be in control uh, along with good good working brakes. So that that's it and now I will go on to show how to use a torque wrench to tighten the pinch bolts to the optimal manufacturer recommended torque. The torques are usually around 5 Newton meters and uh, you can always check it's usually either in the instructions manuals that come with the equipment or you can look at manufacturer's website and here it's even written down as you can see in this video it says 5 Newton meters and when tightening it's important to do it like this alternately one then the other in small increments so that uh, they both uh, because uh, tightening just one unloads a bit the other so you can get uh, using that method one bolt that is too tight and the other that is not tight enough and when you tighten it to the specified torque the first one will then be over tightened and I'm sure I've explained this rather complicated sounding but just use small increments and when you reach to something that you can feel by your hand it's firm you can start using a torque wrench or you can start right from the start using a torque wrench. There I'm setting the torque wrench to 5 Newton meters. If using uh, anti-seize or some other mounting paste or grease on the bolts, which is recommended, it is uh, usually uh, needed to set the tightening torque to some 20% lower than the specified tightening torque for dry mounts. Most manufacturers will explicitly say that the recommended torque is recommended for mounting dry but if it is not said you can usually uh, if it is not said that it's for mount or mounting dry or mounting lubricated you can you can conclude that it's for for mounting dry so reduce the torque by some 20 percent so in this case it will be just over or four newton meters set torque and there here i'm finally using the torque wrench properly holding it at the the last part. The, the first uh, movements were just to use more speed because I was not nowhere near the recommended torque. And this is it. In the next video will show the other parts bicycle assembly. Thanks for watching.